okay today just a quick reading um, I'm gonna prepare something for the Shabbat the weekend that's lit I want to read from uh, Dr. Bree Keaton's book uh, Nails excuse me stripes nails thorns and the blood excellent book for spiritual warfare I'm learning so much thanks again for that gift precious but let me uh, jump right into the reading here I hope that uh, you started your day off you read Isaiah 61 uh, I've been since I did it for you guys I've been doing it for myself as well I would usually read 61 62 and then 63 and stop but I've been reading from 61 to 66 daily to prepare then Ephesians I read all of six okay five is good too to get you prepared but this is the regimen. I read all of six. Then uh, I read um, and, and I personalize it. You know, sometimes I read it all the way through like it is, and then I personalize it too. But then after that, I go to uh, Isaiah 55, and I used to just read 55:11. But since uh, I was uh, led to give you the message to read uh, what I was told to read from now until then to prepare before stepping out here that's what I do now that the same way so we all on the same page okay but um, uh, Dr. Bree's book is, is an excellent source and I hope that you looked at Gwen W-I-N Worley W-O-R-L-E-Y why now we did the nation building community building video okay we did the kingdom building video you know, refer to them as needed, you know, more than once. I'm a person, I, you know, when something is heavyweight jamming, I'll deal with it, you know, daily. The same thing, just to get it ingrained in my brain, like we do with songs we like. You got a favorite song, you know, when it first become your favorite song and you get a hold to that record, but you realize that it's it's a video on YouTube, you might listen to it every day, at least a few times a week. So this is more important than a, a favorite song, not because it come from me, I ain't nowhere, nothing and no one, but because of the time that we're in, okay? Oh, what good thing could come from Nassau? What good thing could come from Detroit, okay? So. The Creator is doing things the way that He does. His ways are not your ways. His thoughts are not your thoughts. Okay, they're much higher. So, but there's something about to really go down. A serious, serious uh, time is at hand. And so, uh, you know, the harvest is ready, but the workmen are few. And you know, what what work can you do? There's, there's a way now, each and every day because you're going to be held accountable for these days really soon you know if uh, the head of the, the head of the satanic church Anton LaVey can uh, repent on his deathbed and I don't know whether uh, his repentance was accepted or denied I mean I'm not the judge thank goodness but, you know, we know we serve a graceful and merciful creator whose ways are not our ways. And he did so many heinous things to his son that Anton LaVey did. You know, he castrated his own son, according to his son. Okay? So, if the creator can have grace and mercy for him, I mean, you know, that's why I'm not in that seat of judgment any longer. And I repent for ever having been. But, uh, something great is at hand and you don't want to have to be like my man and wait until the last minute and hope that uh, your repentance is accepted as sincere because I could imagine that would be the tell of the tale is it sincere yeah you know you can do it at the last minute you know but uh 
it's got to be sincere. I know there are a lot of last minute confessions and a lot of last minute repentances. I'm sure. People see them demon spirits. They see the angel of death coming to holla holla. You know, they begin to humble themselves like they never did in life. So, you know, it, it's, it's high time. You know, you're not going to uh, necessarily get to perfection, but you want to be in the perfect will, which means that you do everything that you can. You do everything that you can do. You make the improvements that you can make. Now's not the time to get worse. You feel me? Bettering yourself is a constant process. It's a daily operation, gangsta. So, you know, when shall you begin? Okay. When you see the earth split? <laughs> I hope not. That may not be counted as sincere. You know, while everything is cool and smooth, get it then. You know, get in. When you want to fit in. Be about it or be without it. All right. So we're going to start with, uh, I'm going to jump around a little bit, but we're going to start with a chapter that uh, deals with the way the enemy attacks in the spirit. Okay. We're learning more about how to war in the spirit. Okay. Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So what do we wrestle against? We wrestle against these demonic powers each and every day. And there is a way. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. That, that way you're going to get it. But there is a way that you're supposed to do. And you're supposed to copy. Your example should be Messiah. Okay? Beyond Isaiah. Beyond Elijah. Beyond Jeremiah. That's right. The name that is above every name. The author and finisher of our faith. Okay. Some of the things that they did were conditional to the time they were in. And the stiff-necked, hard-headed people that they were sent to. The way of Messiah was everlasting. The way was called the way. The truth and the light. It's not about traditions. He said you mix your laws with your traditions. Be ye not ignorant of a small matter of okay. But realize that Ahaya is no respect of persons. And what is Ahaya? According to the Strong's concordance, it is I am that I am. Okay. Yah, I am. Okay. There was no way in that ancient Hebrew. Yeah. And it, it just it is what it is. But there was no double U. It was a V. We become stubborn in the things of tradition. We're mixing laws with traditions. And no better than the Pharisees, if that is what we do. Also, we were commanded in the Great Commission, as was given to us by the author and finisher of our faith. We were commanded to lay hands on the sick so that they would recover. We were also commanded to cast out demons and devils in his name. So that needs to be better understood in the environment that we're in. Okay? Binding and loosing needs to be taught in every congregation. Because whatsoever things you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatsoever things you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatsoever you ask, ask. I command such and such. That thing will laugh at you. I give you one of them evil grins that's worse than a laugh, looking like it's having pleasure tormenting the person more because you ain't got your stuff together. You letting your ego get in the way. The wisdom of man, which is foolishness to God. Go by the word. Ask. I've noticed the difference. Ask in the authority of the name. 
okay? A couple times I slipped and I only believe it was by the grace of God because he, he knew what I meant to say. And so he let it go. But the majority of times, enough times where he could teach me no, that's not how you do it. He showed me no, it don't work that way. So then once I got it ingrained in my mind, okay, this is the way it works. And you know, I slipped up a time or two. Okay. I was doing so much talking and battling with the thing. One time I messed around and <laughs> I loosed the ones down there. You know, I, I was saying bind demons and loose angels and I had got to say it so much I messed around and said loose, get, loose them. And the person snapped out of it and was like, wait a minute, loose them? I was like, uh, oh Lord. Lord, please forgive me, Lord. And of course, the Lord did not honor that because he knew it was a mistake. Again, he's not in a box, but like any good father, he wants to see that you can follow orders. You make a mistake. You know, a good father is going to look past that. It's different. Okay, so, because again, we don't have authority over him. Okay. So as he's watching you do your service as a servant, if he see you make a mistake because you're nervous, you know, you know, he's the best employer, okay? The workmen shall be worthy of their hire. So he's more merciful and graceful than man could ever be. But yes, we're going to start with the mind because everything starts with the mind. Free your mind and then you're behind. Free your mind and the rest will follow. Everything starts in the mind. Everything. You lose a fight first in your mind. You win a fight first in your mind. Any type of fight. Okay? First it's in the mind. Okay, all things start in the mind and then fester. Okay? First comes thought. You think something enough, you'll say it. You say something enough, it'll happen. You'll do it. Thoughts, words, and actions. So attacks against the mind, chapter two. The mind is the focal point of attack. The mind being the focal point of Satan's attack on us becomes high ground in the battle against Satan. When ancient pagan peoples worshiped their gods, they worshiped on high ground called high places or groves. I was reading about that today. I believe it was in Isaiah. Satan wants to attack our high places our minds. Satan is a constant aggressor and bombards us daily, perhaps hundreds of times a day with thoughts of unclean origin. Thoughts shot into our midst from Satan's arsenal are most accurately defined as propaganda. They are just like the propaganda of modern warfare. Their goal is to demoralize the victim by any method possible. Lies and half-truths are propagated and if you receive these lies, then the battle is lost. Your homeland, yourself, your body, your home, defeated. Because first they come in you, when you let them in your home, then they roam. And they won't leave other folks alone. They jump around like House of Pain. Okay? They travel by way of touch as is exemplified in the movie Fallen. Demons are often assigned to speak the same lie in a person's mind several times a day for a whole lifetime. Negative affirmations, negative thoughts, negative people, pessimistic people. Okay? We don't do this because of, of, of fear. Fear is not of God. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power of love and of a sound mind. And we don't do this to scare nobody. If reality scare you, I don't know what to say for you. You're in the wrong place can't help you do which but we do this to keep you aware keep you aware of where you at okay too too often we are uh, lulled to sleep and you know let your ministry do what your ministry posts to. don't be I hustling and ear hustling me and then talking about why do you only focus on I do what I'm sent to do what I'm meant to do what I've been trained to do what was your training your life's training what you went through in life what you know.
talk about what you know, what you know about. I can tell you about the dark side, how they ride, and how to make them run and hide. And to the most high be the glory. Mandatory, end of story. All right. So it is necessary to launch a resistance that is equally persistent. They study us and our ways, you know. Maybe I hustling, ear hustling, checking out the channels, checking out my channel, stealing my little phrases and whatnot. You know, even worse than that, sending trolls, gnomes, dwarfs, and elves. Starting to look like Lord of the Rings around here. World of Warcraft 1. Personal attacks. Other tactics used by Satan's army are personal attacks against you to demoralize or take the wind out of your sails through shame and guilt over both past and present sins, past and recent sins. Even if you have repented of the sin, Satan is frequently successful at reminding you of your unworthiness and causing you to hang your head and agree with him that all is lost and hope is gone. The result is a warrior with his defenses down, vulnerable to the next round of attack. Mixing truth with lies, another effective mode of attack is that the enemy mixes truth with lies to confuse us. Con artists, thieves, and opportunists of all kinds have employed this tactic for personal gain for thousands of years ever since Adam and Eve's expulsion from the garden. The father of lies become, became our father the moment the first Adam yielded to temptation and sin. So we had to begin again. Elijah was not the, the second Adam. Moses was not the second Adam. Isaiah was not the second Adam. Jeremiah was not the second Adam. It was the Messiah. Next assignment, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Maybe, maybe that'll be the reading for tomorrow. We'll do that tomorrow. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Look at some things. Maybe we'll start. We'll start with Matthew as we are the Matthew 24 and 24 crew. In full effect, the elect. Okay. If it were possible. They could fool the very elect. We ain't to be fooled. Okay. The father of lies became our father the moment the first Adam yielded to temptation and sin. Jesus was the second Adam. We had to do it over again. If one lie of the enemy is accepted, others will follow. It is even better for demons if they can coerce their victims into speaking lies out of their own mouths, such as judgments against others. Don't be so judgmental. Judging with your mind is good. You should judge with your mental. Okay? When you begin to condemn others. Okay? Cast dispersions. I know I, I've been guilty of it myself many times. You get good at it. But little do you know you're entertaining demons. Okay? And I repent. Right? And I'm going to endeavor not to do that anymore. I will try. Lord help me. Pray for me. If one lie of the enemy is accepted, others will follow. It is even better for demons if they can coerce their victims into speaking lies out of their own mouths, such as judgments against others, bitter root judgments especially, make you bitter, and lies, rumors, anger, and false blame. Negativity attracts demons because it can be used as a wedge to divide and conquer. Negativity engenders bitterness, offense, hatred, blame, and feeds, hurts, and wounds. Demons of the same name can easily attach themselves to each negative, sinful emotion that we allow to gain a foothold and make it worse. All praise to our Messiah for coming to deliver us from the deceiver. 
Satan's only weapon now is deception. He goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Spiritual warfare. The devil remains a powerful force to deal with for those who are not born again and those who do not employ spiritual warfare. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Why do we have deliverance ministries? What, what is a ministry without deliverance? That should be key. That should be a focal point. Okay? I understand what people want to do. They want to go to church or they want to assemble with believers for the same reason that you go see a movie or a comedy. There's comedies on here. If that's what you want to see, type it in. We're in warfare. We're in battle. And our desire is to win. In the honor and the name of the Messiah. Who came in the flesh. Though he was of the spirit. And he came so that all would be able to taste and see that the Lord is good. All would be able to be saved. For it is not the will of the Most High that any should perish. So when you see people having issues around you, instead of wanting to put them on medication, okay, instead of sending them to some jive doctor or sending them to the rapist, put the word together. Write it down. What, somebody got to write it down. Write it down. No, I'm not writing. Write it down. T-H-E-R-A-P-I-S-T spells therapist. The rapist. Look at it. Letter for letter. Coincidence or coincidence. So instead of allowing yourself to uh, believe in the report of man, whose report will you believe? Is, is Jesus a healer? Is the Messiah a healer? For God is not a man that he should lie. His word cannot return unto him as void. It must accomplish that which he sent it out to do. All right. Like when the water waters the ground and there's a seed in the ground. The way that the system is set up, the way that nature is made, by the creator who did create that has to bring forth fruit it will bud same thing with the word of the Lord so he's not a man that he should lie he's not giving us the spirit of fear with the power of love and of a sound mind and we do have the authority to cast out devils and demons in the name of Jesus who sent out 70 men and they came back overjoyed that, oh, well, we can cast out devils and demons in your name. And what did he tell them? Have mercy. Look in that Bible. It ain't a showpiece. All right. All praise to our Messiah for coming to deliver us from the deceiver. Satan's only weapon now is deception. He goes about as a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. You let him in. Knock, knock. You say, no, no. You don't let him in the door. That's where the vampire analogy comes from. I've said it before. It's very rare that he can just invade. Even, even then there has to be a contract made Usually then it's through the parents The parents uh, can give up a child And it, you know It, it, it seems uh, you know, To me in my meager understanding you know, Admittedly it seems unfair Because the child cannot make that Decision okay. In the legal realm Of man is not supposed to work like that. We're told, you know, if you're underage, I remember when they gave me a, 
the contract dope records with a skull and crossbones for the symbol. And I took it to my mom's, I was 16, you know, cause he, you know, he told us, he, he said, you know, get your parents to okay for you to sign. And I wanted to sign it myself right then and there. But it's illegal for you to enter into a contract if you're underage. Okay, you have to have the parents' consent. So uh, I guess it is a reflection of the spirit realm. Okay, if the parent says, here, you can have my child. Okay, so be it. So that, but that's where intercession comes in. Intercessory prayer also key to deliverance. And it must be something that, again, we increase doing in these days and times. There's people who are unable to say the name. There's people that don't know. What is you, Illuminati? You know something about what's really popping off and you ain't trying to tell nobody. Don't cash your pearls before swine, which means don't tell everything, you know. Don't give your jewels out to fools. Don't give your jewels to fools. But at the same time, each one teach one and try to reach one. Grab somebody, take somebody up under your wing. You got some young people around you, some nieces, some nephews, somebody. Take them and make them your personal project. That's right. Somebody. Somebody will be willing to learn. Okay. Somebody's soil is fertile. Where they can receive the word as a seed. And let it break forth in bud. Like Isaiah 55 and 11. 12, 11 and 10. Demons of bitterness, offense, hatred, blame that cause hurt and wounds. And they can easily attach themselves to each negative, sinful emotion that we allow to gain a foothold and make it worse. Okay. The devil remains a powerful force to deal with for those who are not born again and those who do not employ spiritual warfare. Much more on this subject in the nails section of this book. And again, this is uh, Dr. Bree Keaton, Stripes, Nails, Thorns, and the Blood. Stripes, Nails, Thorns, and the Blood. Got that fast. I tell y'all, smoke that grass. Be feeling the effects for years to come. Believe it. We, we wasn't smoking what y'all smoking now. I don't know what that is. Nieces and nephews be blowing. Smell like something toxic. Look like it's glowing. Walking across the table and whatnot. Have y'all heard of that one? I've heard of that one. You wouldn't touch it with your finger. All right. I digress. Yeah, they putting something in y'all stuff. They scared to death of what you're going to be able to do, nieces and nephew. They scared. Y'all are more prepared, you built for this time. You're gonna be able to do some, some things that's new. And that's all right, that's what you were sent here to do. Okay. The devil remains a powerful force to deal with for those who are not born again and those who do not employ spiritual warfare. Much more on this subject in the nails section of this book. Jesus' nails thorns, stripes, his blood and his death were endured for our sakes to set us free. Do not delay in receiving Jesus Christ as your savior today. The attacks against your thoughts are Satan's bullets, an enemy tactic to demoralize and destroy you. Evil thoughts will come, but this is not sin. It only becomes sin when you take the thoughts and let them have a place in your heart. 
turning an evil thought over and over in your mind is a sign that spiritual warfare needs to take place against that thought and the demon who originated it. Demons love to attach themselves to a person's evil thoughts and stir up the emotions, energizing them. Put on the helmet of salvation right now, Ephesians 6. Okay. Read it. The whole armor of God is listed in Ephesians 6. It starts around 13 and on. Maybe it's no, 6 and 10, excuse me. From there on down. Read it. Ephesians 6 and 10 on down to the end. You can do it. It ain't long. If I can read it, you can too. Read it again. You might have dropped your armor somewhere. Resist the enemy by defeating him before he gains a foothold in your thought life. Apply the blood of Jesus to your mind daily. And bind scriptures to yourselves. Bind scriptures to yourself. <laughs> I know it's yourselves. I never got less than an A in English. You ever heard of that? Detroit Public School student never got less than an A in English. Graduated with an A plus on that boy. Don't ask me what I had in trig. All right. First F. I didn't. The teacher wasn't teaching it right. Okay. No, I, I couldn't focus. I was doing good in math until they started putting letters in the mix. So who thought of this? I was mad at Pythagoras. I didn't know what to do. Pythagorean theorem. Got to remember these formulas and do the problem. That was my problem. My memory is it's different. Okay. <laughs> oh Lord. But yeah, you bind scriptures to yourself for protection, deliverance, and healing. Okay, we talked about offensive and defensive binding and offensive and defensive loosing. Okay. okay. You bind for defense and offense. Of course, you bind up demon spirits in the authority of the name of Jesus. So I ask in the authority of the name of Jesus. That's the form right there. Okay. And you call a spirit by the problem that you see. Okay. That the spirit of bitterness be bound up. The spirit of bitterness in me be bound up. That the spirit of bitterness in so and so be bound up. First, excuse me. First, you want to loose so and so from the spirit. Then you bind it up right quick. So, just run it back. I ask in the authority of the name of Jesus that I be loosed from the spirit of bitterness. And I ask in the authority of the name of Jesus. That the spirit of bitterness that was in me be bound up. That the spirit of bitterness that has just loosed me be bound up. I like to go heavy and say, I ask in the authority of, of the name of Jesus that the Father loose legions of angels, of his angels of war, to come down and bind up the spirit of bitterness. That has uh, oppressed me. Okay. All right. Or well, that has uh, just now been loosed from me. Because you have to be specific. It's kind of like where legal contracts come from. It's one of the reasons legal contracts, why is there so much Latin involved? That was that's a favored language in conjuring. Latin. Favored language of demons. Harry Potter, they spoke Latin all throughout. 
They was really fooling on me. It had to do with the legalism of spiritual warfare. You need to say it right because it's all about the word. The power your words have over the air and the atmosphere around you. So you absolutely have to uh, word it right. So in the authority of the name of Jesus, I ask. Father, that you loose legions of your angels of war to come down now to surround me and protect me from any retaliation from any demonic forces. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, I ask, and it is given unto me. I believe this, therefore, it is so. In the authority of the name of Jesus, I ask that the spirit of bitterness and the spirit of rejection and all of the spirits that they came with Loose me now, and in the authority of the name of Jesus, I ask that those angels of war loosed from the Father now take hold of and bind up all of those spirits. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, I ask, Lord, that those angels of war take those evil spirits and cast them down into the pit of the abyss, the dungeon of the dragon, or wherever else Jesus would have them to go, and let them remain there, chained there, for now and forevermore. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, I ask. I believe this, therefore I receive this, and it is so. Resist wicked, resist wicked, like a candle wick sticking down in the candle. Ready to make you burn. Resist wicked thoughts. And claim the victory in Jesus' name. Prayer for salvation. This is a prayer she has. We're going to read it as she wrote it. Jesus, Yahshua, I am a sinner, but I repent of all my sins right now in the name of Yahshua, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. Please forgive me and wash me clean in the blood of the perfect Lamb who died for me. I believe you are the Son of God, Ahaya, Yah, the Creator, the Most High, the Father, the True and Living, All-Knowing, Supreme, Omniscient, Omnipotent, Omnipresent. Yes, Omniscient is All-Knowing, Omniscient. And that the Father, the Creator, the Most High, Ahaya, Yah, raised you from the dead, Jesus, the Messiah. And I speak these words with my mouth and I believe them in my heart. For as it is written, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 9. Now by faith I believe I am born again. I receive eternal life through my Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. It is so. Now I choose to give my life to you and to live for you. And it is done. It is true. A couple more things. Nails. The final unchangeable blows that bound Jesus to the cross in excruciating agony. The sound of the hammer rang out as each stroke that pierced his hands and feet brought us closer to deliverance from the enemy of our souls. For we wrestled not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Ephesians 6 and 12. For the name of Jesus is far above every name that is named. 
Philippians 2 and 9, not only in this world but also in that which is to come, Ephesians 1 and 21. And he has put all things under his feet, 1 Corinthians 15 and 27. Jesus said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, Luke 10 and 19. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, according to the authority given the believer in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, I bind Satan the strong man Matthew 12 and 29 and I command the principalities powers mights and dominions to be loosed from all their assignments against you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth it is so and it is done and that's the way that she wrote it like I said you know I had the sharpest knife in the drawer I'm not the most powerful warrior only that which the Father allows for me to be. And so she's a, a more seasoned vet in warfare. She's commanded and it's worked. I gotta get there. You know? And I know a couple things I need to do. And I will do them too. So, I'm gonna say it again. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, Ephesians 6 and 12. For the name of Jesus is far above every name that is named, Philippians 2 and 9, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Ephesians 1 and 21 and he has put all things under his feet 1st Corinthians 15 and 27 Jesus said I give unto you that's you power to tread stomp on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy like a tank has treads you mow them over that's in Luke chapter 10 verse 19. All right. Jesus said he gives that power unto you. Read it for yourself. It help to strengthen you. Luke chapter 10 and 19. Bind that to you. Ask in the authority of the name of Jesus that Luke chapter 10 and 19 be bound to you. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, you believe this, therefore you receive this, and it is so. I ask in the authority of the name of Jesus that Luke chapter 10 verse 19 be bound to all of you and in the authority of the name of Jesus I ask therefore I believe this and receive this and it is so therefore in the name of Jesus according to the authority given by the believer excuse me therefore in the name of Jesus according to the authority given to the believer in Luke chapter 10 and 19 these things shall follow them that believe and in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ I ask by the will of Ahia that Satan the strong man Matthew 12 and 29 be bound right now I ask in the authority of the name of Jesus and legions of angels are loosed right now to bind up the strong man from within you and from around you and that they clear the air of any demonic activity any demonic retaliation any hindrance from demons here or there where I am or where you are and in the authority of the name of Jesus, I ask this and I believe this, therefore I receive this. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, I command, in the authority of the name of Jesus, I ask that the principalities, powers, mights, and dominions 
that have oppressed, possessed, depressed, hindered, or bothered you in any way, shape, or form be loosed from all their assignments against you. That they be loosed, that the prince of the power of the air be loosed from your airspace. That the prince of the power of the air be loosed from your computer. That the prince of the power of the air, I ask in the authority and name of Jesus, that the prince of the power of the air be loosed from your cell phone. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, I ask. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, I believe this, therefore I receive this. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, it is so. In the name of Jesus, it is so. Principalities, powers, mights, dominions. Come forth from sins. You can cast out a spirit, spirit of error. E-R-R-O-R -R -R, Error Error We talked about that before 1 John 4 and 6 Error Is a principality For those who do not like to think That they are ever In error Or for those who have a hard time Accepting one another can point out An error I've been that way before. I, I'm that way sometimes. Can you admit that? See, that's the presence of that spirit that I felt it, felt it in my stomach. I didn't want to say that. You see? You can deal with yourself all day. Cast these things away. For who? For you. So you'll be better. And then for your loved ones. Because guess what? Like a person with a bad flu. You infecting other people around you. Ain't nobody gotta hear you. You so shame or you so prideful. To cast out the spirit of error, which is a principality. The power along with it is Antichrist. First John 4 and 3. The might along with that is the spirit of heaviness. The dominion, along with that, is the spirit of rejection. And the sin is idolatry. Colossians 3 and 5. You got to rewind. Okay, cast out a spirit of slumber. That's the principality, Romans 8 and 11. The power is whoredoms, Hosea 4 and 12. The might is gluttony. Luke 21 and 34, the dominion is guilt, James 2 and 10, and Romans 3 and 19, and a familiar spirit, 2 Chronicles 33 and 6, and the sin is an unclean spirit, all can kick off from having an unclean spirit, Mark 1 and 23, a big fella for a lot of people, a strong man, you need to cast out the spirit of fear, you're scared of everything. You scared of your shadow. You scared of tomorrow. You scared of what people gonna say. You scared to go out. You scared to stay in the house. You scared? Call the police. I cast out a spirit of fear. And they might not come. Then what you gonna do? Be terrified? Cast out a spirit of fear. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 The power is bondage Romans 8 and 15 The might is anxiety Psalm 55 3 through 6 The confusion Excuse me The dominion is confusion Psalm 45 and 15 James 3 and 16 Okay Cast out a perverse spirit Isaiah 19 and 14 The power is a deaf and dumb spirit Mark 9 and 25 The might is a slothful spirit Proverbs 26 13 through 14 The dominion is a spirit of defiance Zechariah 7 11 through 12 Cast out the spirit of unbelief Important Gotta get rid of that one Matthew 17 and 20 
power is a stubborn spirit. 1 Samuel 15 and 23. Cast out a lying spirit. You know, not admitting also run with lying. It don't matter if you believe that you fooled whoever with it. It's still a lying spirit and it's a demon over you for that. A lying spirit, first kings, 22 and 22. And remember, what you do don't just affect you. The power, divination, Acts 16 and 16. The might, exhibitionism. Acts 16 and 17, 1 Kings 22 and 11. The dominion is deception. 2 Timothy 3.13 Sin that leads to this uh, legion. Seduction. 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Just a few more, and then we're going to close for the day. And cast out a haughty spirit. Thank you, something. Thank you, important. Thank you, big time. Thank you, Papa Bear status. It's a baby bear. A baby bear square. Trying to get yours out here. Cast out the haughty spirit. In the authority of the name of Jesus, I ask, Father, that you loose legions of your angels of war to come down and loose me from the haughty spirit and bind it up and cast it down into the pit of the abyss, the dungeon of the dragon or wherever else Jesus would have it to go and that it remain there, chained there for now and forevermore and in the authority of the name of Jesus. I believe this. Therefore I receive this and it is so. A haughty spirit, Proverbs 16 and 18. The power is a spirit of blindness. I said pride will give you a blind side. Matthew 12 and 22. Second Corinthians 4 and 4. The might is a critical spirit. Oh man, I got all of these, huh? Matthew 7 and 5 Proverbs 22 and 10 He no, he no respect to persons I can admit mine Have mercy Might take me a minute sometime So I tell y'all to pray for me I'm a mess A critical spirit Proverbs 22 and 10 Matthew 7 and 5 That's the might That's the might And the dominion is a spirit of strife. James 3, 16, Philippians 2 and 3. Lord, I ask in the authority of the name of Jesus that the spirit of strife, the critical spirit, the spirit of blindness and the haughty spirit be loosed from my life and that they be bound up as one. That they be cast out to wherever Jesus would have them to go. That they remain their chain there. And I believe this, therefore I receive this. I ask in the authority of the name of Jesus. And it is so. We cast out a spirit of racism. Proverbs 26 and 21. And in this land in which we live, everyone, regardless of what you think consciously, Everyone has been subject to this particular part of the chessboard dynamic, the behavior modification over society, the agenda to make us hate each other. Everyone should say this one. I ask in the authority of the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, that you loose legions of angels to come now and loose me from the spirit of racism, the power of pride, and the might of a religious spirit. And 
and I ask Heavenly Father that they bind those spirits as one in chains soaked in the blood of the Son Jesus and I ask in the authority of the name of Jesus that they cast them down into the pit of the abyss the dungeon of the dragon or wherever Jesus would have them to go and let them remain their chain there and have no part of me for now and forevermore and in the authority of the name of Jesus I believe this therefore I receive this and I ask in the name of Jesus that it is so and cast out the principality the spirit of envy first I'm saying the principality then I say the power the might the dominion and where there's listed a sin that helps to bring these in I'll list that too but we just got two more well, one more after this principality the principality is the spirit of envy I cast out the spirit of envy Proverbs 27 and 4 the power of unforgiveness Hebrews 12 and 15 the might of jealousy, Numbers 5 and 14, and Proverbs 6 and 34. The dominion of hate, 1 John 3 and 15. The sin, murder, helps to bring all of those into power. And with wartime going on right now, you may only have racism against the Palestinians. Subconscious. You may have racism against white people or black people or Asian people or Mexican people. Because there's a grand agenda, you see, by the offender, who's the great pretender. Oh yes, he's the great pretender. He wants to try to put us all in a blender. But his agenda is to keep us looking at each other as the source of problems. So we don't pay no attention to him. It's a diversionary tactic. So, again, and all say these things for ourselves first and then we go out and last but not least and this is common I see a look of bitterness rejection people ready to tear your head off you step on shoes you don't give a guy your number if you're a young lady who somebody asks numbers of Or, you know, somebody cut in front of you on the highway. Or a family member did you wrong many, many moons ago. Or perhaps a classmate, a co-worker. Whatever is the case. Neighbor for some. The principality is revenge. And it is written, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But that's a principality, a strong man. Principalities are the most powerful. Then we're going down. The principality is revenge. Romans 12 and 19, Leviticus 19 and 18. The power is bitterness. Romans 3 and 14, Ephesians 4 and 31. And for all of those in, in murder again is the sin that can result or bring them in and for all of those I didn't name sins for it was the previous sin so for the principality of fear perverse spirit unbelief the sin was all the unclean spirit it helps to facilitate those principalities and once the strong man is in, excuse me, he's called the strong man because he stands there, he stands guard and protects. He's guarding. He keeps the other spirits away from your reach. So that's the one you usually got to knock out first. And like we like to say here, you know, pride gives you a blind side and denial. To deny is to keep you from being near. And I believe, uh, a couple of different times we've, we've made that clear but it just goes to show that the Holy Spirit is here uh, because I had a viewer from uh, Flint Town what up Flint Town uh, what up dope who broke that down the same way I did
and hadn't seen it. So, we ain't making up stuff. We heavyweight jamming. Okay? And everybody got something to bring to the table. And I'm so glad uh, to know you all and to fellowship with you all, you know. I just, you know, I, you know, I didn't mean to uh, put out any fear, but I was just trying to pull everybody's coat, you know. Know what you're dealing with, with this YouTube thing, you know, watch, view, whatever. If you feel led by the Spirit to comment, you know, you pray, you, know, you do what you feel led to do, say what you feel led to say, you know. Don't be in bondage from, from fear in any type of way, but, you know, it'd be wrong of me to just want you to love on me and, and give me good comments and likes because of ego or something and then not tell you what's popping. So, you know, what, what you led to do. Some people gotta fall back, okay? Some press forward. You don't lose all your pieces in warfare or chess. Some of them you send out front. And some of them you pull back. You need some of the young uh, warriors. So I, so I don't want it clear to the enemy who ain't the sharpest knives in the drawer for real. They really is slow and throw it off because they're demonically driven. The demons is awful dumb. They've been around for a long time. Some things they know because of that, but they kind of simple. Okay? So, you know, we have to be strategic. So, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that for now, but uh, this has been Unplug Em. I thank you. Uh, we're going to look more into Dr. Keaton's book at another time. Well, look, we had two more. Okay, real quick on these two. And that'll, that'll uh, fill this out. The Principality and the Spirit of Witchcraft. is the spirit of witchcraft the power is infirmity the spirit of witchcraft Deuteronomy 18 and 10 the power is infirmity Luke 3 and 11 the might is anger excuse me sorry about that anger Colossians 3 and 8 the might oh, principality was the spirit of witchcraft Power, infirmity, the might, anger, and the dominion is control. Anger, Colossians 3 and 8, con uh, control, Matthew 20, 25, and 26. Matthew 20, verses 25 through 26. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21. So, the dominion is control. The might is anger, Colossians 3 and 8. The power is infirmity. You'll be sick. Luke 3 and 11. That's what infirmity is. I went down to St. James Infirmary. It used to be a name for a hospital was an infirmary. And principality, spirit of witchcraft, Deuteronomy 18 and 10. That, that's a strong man spirit. You want to control people and you have anger towards someone and you want to do something to them. And the principality of sorcery. Interesting that she has those two separated. That's Revelations 21 and 8. Revelation 18 and 23. Genesis 31, 25 through 26. And the might, there is no power, but the might is a Jezebel spirit. Oh, okay. The power is infirmity also. I got it. The might is a Jezebel spirit. And the dominion is rebellion. The Jezebel spirit, Revelation 2 and 20. Rebellion, 1 Samuel 15 and 23. And we're going to end it like this. I cast out in the authority of the name of Jesus. 
I ask in the authority in the name of Jesus that I now cast out all other strongholds that protect and keep pain and lies in and God's truth and deliverance out. According to 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, Ezekiel 13 and 6, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, and Luke 4 and 18. It is written in Ezra, now it is written in Ezra 9 and 8. Now for a little space, grace hath been shown from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and give us a nail in his holy place, that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. In Colossians 2 and 14 it is written, Jesus blotted out the handwriting of ordinances, the devil's ammunition against us, his legalism, and nailed it to the cross. Now, I pray to the Most High, the Creator of all, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless, blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ. I ask that it be so. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. Will you repent and give up your sin today? Ahaya, the Most High, I am that I am, the Eternal One, will nail it to the cross. Brother Whistle, the best game, boss.